OK. Excellent. Uh, good morning, everybody, and welcome to this morning's uh, meeting of the Public Select. Public Services Select Committee meeting. Um, first item on the agenda is uh, to elect a chair. Uh, can I please ask for nominations for chair, please? I'd like to nominate uh, Councillor Trahan. Thank you. Can I second that nomination? Thank you. Um, are there any other nominations? Uh, no, um, just for transparency. Um, if everyone could say uh, all in favour, please, just so it's transparent. <laughs> all in favour. <laughs> Thank you very yeah. much. David. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Uh, item two, absence for apologies. Um, any absence for apologies? Um, apologies for absence even, Hazel. Yes, we've got two chair from councillors uh, Jordan and um, and um, <laughs> he Howarth. And councillor Howarth. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, item three is declarations of interest. Um, as and when. As and when, chair. Excellent, thank you. Uh, item four is a public open forum. I've not been made aware of um, any members of the public, so I'll take that as a no. Uh, moving on to item five, regional collaboration, Gwent Public Services Board. Um, Sharon is on screen, so if I can pass to Sharon, please. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chair. I think my colleague Richard is going to start us off and then I'll Drop in and out with Richard, but thank you. <laughs> OK. Thank you and, and good morning, everybody. Uh, Richard Jones, I'm the Performance Manager at Monmouthshire Council, um, here to present uh, my colleague Sharon the uh, item five, which is to provide the committee with an update on the proposals that have been developed to move to a quite wide public service board uh, and an update on the process for the developing the next wellbeing assessment and and wellbeing plan. Um, between Sharon and I will go through and give you a brief overview of, of, of the, the key uh, key updates in the report for you. Um, and I'll start off by giving a little bit of background um, about uh, the process we've gone through to get to the to the point today of presenting the, this update. Um, so under the Wellbeing of Future Generations Act, uh, specific public, public bodies need to act jointly via public service boards to improve the economic, social, environmental and cultural wellbeing of their area. Uh, in order to do this, they must assess the state of uh, wellbeing in their areas, set local objectives and take all reasonable steps to, to meet them. Uh, members will recall that the Monmouthshire Public Service Board was established to fulfil this role in Monmouthshire and subsequently went on to develop its wellbeing assessment and agreed on Monmouthshire wellbeing plan and objectives that board members are working on uh, from 2018 until 2023. Uh, in July last year, we came to the committee and provided an update on initial work that was being commenced to develop options for regional public service board. And the committee expressed at that point their overall support for the move to regional PSB to be explored further. Uh, the Wellbeing of Future Generations Act specifies that two or more public service boards may agree to merge or collaborate if they consider it would assist them in contributing to the achievement of the wellbeing goals. Uh, the power to merge the PSB sits with the boards themselves without the need for uh, decision by individual bodies. Uh, this report, though, provides members with an update on the arrangements that have been developed to merge the five current public service boards in Gwent to form a Gwent wide PSB and the rate of development of, of remaining local arrangements in Monmouthshire. Um, the development of this work uh, so far has been led by G10, which is an informal collaborative arrangement made up of the 10 statutory public bodies in Gwent. Uh, and has also involved each of the existing boards across the region and representative from from those public bodies. Um, so the report sets out a range of arrangements have been considered as part of this development and I'll, I'll hand over to to my colleague Sharon to take you through some of the, the key points and conclusions from those um, considerations. Thank you Rich. Yeah. So just to um, to kind of give a little bit more context around um, the introduction to this report that Richard has given there in terms of the background and legislative 
requirements of forming the regional PSB. Um, there are a range of areas that we're considering as part of this development. Um, those include the legislative requirements, so the statutory duties that sit with our public service board that will need to sit with the regional public services board going forward. We will have uh, regional and local delivery options and looking at how um, we can have more of a strategic overview of those requirements and different agendas for the region. Um, also alignment of other boards um, across the region, which I know this Public Services Select Committee has been involved in um, to date so far, looking at where Monmouthshire interests are served through regional functions. Um, so we will have more oversight, control and alignment, I believe, of those boards under this structure. Along with that, there should be stronger performance management arrangements and then also longer term looking at the next iteration of the wellbeing assessment and wellbeing plan that will then sit with the regional PSB, but will still have localism as part of that approach. So there are a number of opportunities that we feel through the regionalisation of the public services board. Some of that will be to obviously improve the wellbeing um, and also thinking about how improved wellbeing can be strengthened through the wider collaboration, particularly for Gwent partners who will be able to operate um, utilising their capacity far more effectively at the regional level. Uh, but with the five local authorities obviously having a strong voice for localism as part of that structure. There will be strategic overview, we believe, as part of this, of the legal and statutory duties that will sit with the Public Services Board. So we will have um, stronger oversight of agendas such as Voudre SV. So for those who may be not familiar with the legislation in there, that's violence against women, domestic abuse and sexual violence, um, things such as the Crime and Disorder Act and Community Safety, Children's Act and Children and Families measure. So thinking about the voice of the child and considering children and families in our planning of services going forward. So they're just some examples of the statutory duty, duties, excuse me, <coughs> that will sit with the Regional Public Services Board, but we hope to be able to strengthen through this approach. So it should give us a really good opportunity to try to look at this in a more joined up, cohesive and collaborative way than we have currently. Um, it also means that there could be a strengthened focus on broader agendas that are common across the regions, things that include uh, mental health, climate change, um, obesity. So where we have common issues across the region, we will have a stronger approach to that, hopefully under the regionalisation of the Public Services Board. But again, not losing how that translates into local delivery as part of this. Um, it would also enable us, hopefully, some of the other opportunities being that we can align these regional boards, thinking particularly of the other statutory boards in this space, such as the Regional Partnership Board for Health and Social Care, working far more closely alongside the Regional Public Services Board. And then it's thinking about cutting down duplication, having shared priorities at that level, following through into planning and delivery and enabling us to have cohesive plans that talk to each other in this space. Um, but can operate across the entire region, again, not losing the localism as part of that. And there's also this opportunity then to strengthen the governance, to have a more solid uh, partnership and performance management framework underneath this structure so that we'll be able to understand um, more closely and, and have more oversight and management of how regional boards in this area then are accountable, how they're well governed and how their agendas actually lend themselves to better performance across the region. So it should have a number of opportunities as part of the regionalisation of the PSB and it's certainly a premise that we're working on as part of the development of this. We are aware that there are still some challenges um, in terms of developing the Regional Public Services Board approach. So we need to ensure that partnerships are robust, they are effective and that they are delivering effectively. Um, we have to ensure that partnerships are properly aligned across the region to make sure that we don't have duplication and to make sure that we are servicing agendas in the best way possible with the best use of our resources available. Um, we are also aware that any regionalisation sometimes dilutes the localism, so we're trying desperately through this approach now to strengthen as we develop it in the early stages, get the foundations right to ensure that the regional approach does have a strong local delivery element to this and we don't lose localism, which the Act requires us to have strong oversight of and, and is the premise for why we have the regional PSB. 
Uh, and also it's that piece about accountability and governance and performance management so that we can strengthen the approaches that we have to this going forward to ensure that we do have accountability of these agendas. We are monitoring performance and we do understand how this work is being delivered effectively all the way down to our local communities. So there are some of the challenges of regionalising this agenda, but I think it's put us in a really strong position going forward to um, with the the directive from G10 to start to look at this work, which myself, Richard and our Gwent partners have been looking at for um, a number of months now to start to develop this to make sure that we have solid foundations as we start to develop the regionalisation of the PSD, but also addressing potentially where We've learned over the last five years some of the weaknesses that we can see in structures that we could potentially now strengthen through the regional approach to the Public Services Board. So um, I'll pass you back to my colleague Richard, as I think we, we'd like to try and talk a little bit about how this can also lend itself to the next iteration of the wellbeing assessment and plan. Thank you. Thanks, Sharon. Um, yeah, so as Sharon mentioned, the, the move to uh, Regional PSB will be a catalyst for a great wide wellbeing assessment and wellbeing plan um, and some of the significant timescales and milestones for achieving that are set out in, in Appendix 1. Uh, I just wanted to give you a brief update on uh, proposals developed so far to, to undertake that assessment, but also how that will um, be undertaken, not just at the regional level, but also a link down into uh, assessing well-being at Monmouthshire and a local community le area level in, in Monmouthshire as well. So as Sharon has said, we've been working with our, our colleagues across the five PSBs to develop proposals for an integrative and collaborative approach to undertaking the next iteration of the, the wellbeing assessment um, and that will build on the existing assessments that, that are in place already uh, and it'll, the assessment will structure itself around the four areas of wellbeing so social wellbeing, economic wellbeing, environmental wellbeing and cultural wellbeing. Uh, and the assessment will use a wide range of evidence to inform that, so that include qualitative and quantitative data from a range of, of national and local sources, it will involve academic research, and it will also involve uh, people's views through engagement to understand wellbeing in, in the area. Uh, and in terms of the engagement, which is obviously a critical part of the assessment, there's been a regional engagement group that's looking at to develop, looking at developing uh, a consistent approach to community engagement across across Gwent. In Monmouthshire, uh, members will, will recall for the current assessment, we undertook an extensive uh, community engagement exercise through the our Monmouthshire uh, engagement work, which looked to test uh, people's uh, real experiences uh, and whether some of the data conclusions we draw were accurate with, with what people were experiencing in, in our communities. Um, and to, to do that, as well as online surveys, we used a range of different engagement methods. Uh, and we very much see this next iteration of the wellbeing assessment building on that work uh, and, and those engagement approaches we undertook within Monmouthshire, obviously abiding with um, coronavirus guidance uh, that's in place uh, at the time as well. Um, the assessment will take an asset based approach, so rather than focus purely on needs, it'll look to build and identif build, identify and build on strengths in our communities, as well as looking at where there are areas of need that, that can and challenges that need to be addressed. Uh, the assessment will also look at uh, future trends, whether positive or, or negative, so that we can look to maximise the wellbeing of future generations for the, the longer term as well. Um, so as well as looking at wellbeing across Gwent, they say the assessment in Monmouthshire will look at a local community level. Um, so the assessment will be based around the five clusters we use for the existing wellbeing assessment, which should be familiar to members. Um, so the five clusters are Abergavenny and surrounding area, uh, Monmouth and surrounding area, uh, the heart of Monmouthshire, which includes Usk and Raglan, uh, Chepstow and the lower Wye Valley, uh, and then Sevenside, which includes Caldicotta and Mega. Um, uh, as well as looking at the five areas, those five areas within Monmouthshire, we may go into to more specific locality information based on what evidence is available. And also, we deemed it important locally to look at what, what that means for well-being as Monmouthshire, for Monmouthshire as a whole as, as well. Um, so once the wellbeing assessment, once it's complete, um, 
it will have a role in informing the Gwent Wide Wellbeing Plan and, and indeed local uh, activity and partnership delivery, to, delivery that will continue in, in Monmouthshire as, as well. Um, and as Sharon has mentioned, there'd be some development to those local delivery arrangements in line with the proposed move to regional PSB. And I think Sharon, you have to give probably a bit more update about that local delivery and, and development. Yeah, no, that's fine, Rich, thank you. Um, so in terms of local delivery, we don't anticipate any of the structures that we have locally changing as part of the regionalised um, PSB. We believe that the structures we have currently are strong, they're relevant to the delivery that we have locally within the county. Um, obviously, it's an iterative, iterative process. So as the regionalisation uh, and the regional wellbeing plan comes into being, then it's obviously a good time for us to constantly be reflecting on what we have locally and how that can evolve to be able to deliver better outcomes for citizens across Monmouthshire. That being said, at the current moment in time, we will be retaining our PSB programme board which has always been in place under our current PSB. Um, it's at the right level of seniority with officers who have direct control over their service areas. It mirrors our current public services board, so all partners are present in that board structure. Uh, and that board, we believe, will become the regional, um, the regional, sorry, the local strategic board for Monmouthshire going forward that will have oversight and will continue to deliver against the priorities that the PSB is setting now in its last meeting with us. Um, those priorities are in line with our current delivery in the county. Um, they are also going to remain responsible for the current wellbeing plan until 2023, which will stay in place and the prioritisation of um, energy efforts and focus of our partners going forward will be agreed at the next public services board. Nothing is really a great surprise to members in terms of the areas we're prioritising, particularly looking back and reflecting on the last year with COVID. So things such as mental health have been exacerbated. We recognise the inequality and the impact on people's um, living levels and, and incomes um, over the last years and also considering things such as climate change and climate emergency, those things haven't gone away um, and it's really building on those priority areas of focus going forward but obviously thinking about um, being responsive to what has we emerged from the pandemic and the impacts that has on our community going forward. So just to assure members that we will still have a strengthened strategic board in the county that will mirror the PSB, that will oversee the local delivery structures that we have in place currently and will continue to manage that process. But as we start to develop, as Richard said, to the Regional Public Service Board, part of the role of us as the officers group for that work will be to ensure absolutely that the local voice is still heard at the regional level and vice versa, so that that localism is not lost as part of the regionalisation, but that we now develop the proper governance structures, performance management frameworks that ensure that we still have that, that um, connectivity to the regional at the local level as well. So everything will stay in place locally, um, but we will just have strengthened focus and strengthened roles going forward to ensure that delivery remains current and is responsive to the needs within our communities and the current wellbeing plan will still be with us until 2023. So, Rich, is there anything else you'd like to add to that or we're happy to take questions from members, if that's OK, Chair? Thank you. Uh, thank you both. Um, very interesting uh, and thanks for the update. Um, I'll, I'll go to the members um, and there's only myself and two others, so I'll start with Sheila, if I may, please. Sorry, Councillor Roden. <laughs> <laughs> so who are you going to, Jamie? Sheila, Sheila. after you, Sheila. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I'd like to know a little bit more about the programme board. You've, te you've touched on it, Sharon, and um, it's very interesting to hear that things, you know, are going to, going to continue um, in that respect. But I'd like to know how that will because it will be, obviously it'll be the local issues which will be fed through to the regional board, but is that going to increase the workload on offices? Um, how is that going to be sort of um, the work going to be distributed is really um, I'm really interested in. And obviously when you look at other authorities programme boards, we can always um, pool resources and ideas and, and I, I appreciate the, the idea behind the regional co collaboration is to do just that. And hopefully um, it doesn't mean that we've got a 
how can I say, five different programme boards doing the same thing um, when you could be sharing some of that work. So if you yeah. could give me just a little bit more information on that, I appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, of course. And um, thank you, Councillor. Yeah, the, the, the current uh, current programme board has been in place for a long time in Monmouthshire. It's, it was structured at the, exactly the same time as the Public Services Board. It mirrored the PSB in, in our local Monmouthshire Public Services Board. Representatives at a senior level who have direct control over their service areas, so they're able to be able to direct and steer what delivery needs to happen and how they can best resource delivery against our wellbeing plan priorities. So I don't anticipate that workload changing dramatically because the wellbeing plan will stay current within the, the um, Monmouthshire area for the remaining two years of that plan. And the programme board will retain that strategic oversight and that delivery to ensure we stay on track to deliver against what have been our current priorities that we've set ourselves in Monmouthshire. I absolutely take your point about the regionalisation and having five boards potentially duplicating, but the the local boards we believe, so the programme board for us particularly, will be the board that absolutely retains localism as part of this delivery, but will be the voice to the regional PSB we hope going forward where we have common priorities across the region that the regional public services board should be able to have more ownership over and take more direction and steer in terms of how we best resource that at a regional level. So where we have, um, for example, mental health or climate change that we know at the moment are, are common priorities across the Gwent region, we know that under a regional PSB, we, we anticipate that they will have um, more ability to be able to um, steer and direct the work regionally of all our Gwent partners, particularly in terms of that agenda. And then it will just be how that feeds down locally then that our programme board will be able to make sense of. So they will be looking very much at any regional priorities, how they actually fit with us locally and where that needs to play out in Monmouthshire. Because we do have, even though we, we might have um, mental health as a common priority across Gwent. We understand that the demographics, the geography in Monmouthshire will be very different in terms of how you resource and service that in the county. So the programme board would be instrumental in that process of being able to influence how the regional priority is delivered locally in Monmouthshire to meet the needs of our residents and citizens across the county. So I, I don't anticipate, Councillor, that there would be any additional work at this stage. I think it's more about the programme board actually stepping into a space where they have far more autonomy now in terms of the local delivery with the regionalised PSB sitting above them at that level, if that answers your question. Thank you. Oops. Yes, indeed, Chan. Thank you very much for expanding on that for me, yes. Good explanation, thanks. Thank you, Chairman. OK, thank you, Councillor Woodhouse. Councillor Rowden. Ah, right. Thank you, uh, uh, Chair. Uh, fascinating report. Thank you very much for delivering it. Um, it it's quite interesting, the, the balance that's trying to be achieved between regionalism and localism, because normally you'd think that they're mutually incompatible terms. So you, you've talked about how you expect this to, to function, uh, but until it starts, will we really be able to have a, uh, an answer to that question? And secondly, uh, presumably there is a requirement for extra resources if you have this double layer. Will we be getting additional uh, benefits to uh, ensure that uh, we are getting good value from this kind of system? Just uh, a few thoughts, perhaps. Interested in your uh, your views on that. I don't. Shall do you I? want me to come in on that one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, um, I think we already see um, some of the tensions, Councillor, in terms of local delivery and regional delivery, which is partly why we, the, the, the remit of this select committee was changed, if you recall, um, 18 months, two years ago, was because we could see that actually where regionalised agendas were delivering on behalf of Monmouthshire, we really wanted to understand how effective they were. So this committee was instrumental in being able to challenge on how effective regional arrangements are 
at a local level for us. So the learning we think from that will help inform how we need to start to structure the Regional Public Service Board in terms of its performance management and its accountability and its governance framework that sits around it. So what we're looking at is we public service boards um, have absolute responsibility for delivery for certain elements that, that quite clearly sit with them in terms of legislative, but also that will sit with them in terms of um, distinct methodologies and why things should sit with a PSB going forward in this space, that we will ha have the correct performance management framework, governance and accountability structures in place to be able to oversee and ensure that we are um, delivering effectively at a local level through the regional arrangements that we have. So an example, if you look at the partnership landscape in Appendix 4, I believe it is of the report, there's an incredibly crowded landscape there, lots of partnerships that are delivering lots of different um, thematic areas. Some of them are policy driven, some of them are legislatively driven, um, some of them are program driven, and some way, shape or form, those boards will be delivering outcomes for citizens in Monmouthshire. Currently, it's arguable that that um, there is no governance structure overseeing the effectiveness of how well that's being delivered locally for us. So the regional PSB in this space would hopefully lend itself to having that greater oversight, greater accountability and being able to steer and direct how local delivery can take place through this structure we anticipate. So I think the learning that we've had through this select committee and through practice just generally in this space through PSBs over the last five years, we can actually see how we potentially are in a really good position across Gwent because of the willingness of all of our partners in the region to be working at a, at a regional level to look at how we can strengthen and, and try and close down some of these gaps and ensure that the regional and local delivery is solid. Um, there is in the report also um, talks about the scrutiny arrangements at a local and regional level. I, I can't really go into any detail on that at the moment because it's a developing feat. So officers in this space are looking at this um, currently who have responsibility for scrutiny. But we do see that there is still a need to retain local and regional scrutiny, we feel, also to strengthen this approach going forward to ensure that we can start to see tangible outcomes for citizens as part of the regionalised public services board across Gwent. Um, your other question then was around additional resource. Um, at the moment, it hasn't required any additional resource. We were servicing this through current structures and through cooperation, I believe, with Gwent partners. So um, for, for Monmouthshire, it's myself and Richard with Matt overseeing us, Matt Gatehouse at the moment, in terms of how we're structuring this as, as a region. Um, whether it will require additional resource at this time, we, we don't believe it does at the moment, um, but we're not quite sure where we might be 12 two years from now, but I can only assure you that at the moment we have officers who are working in a collaborative and cooperative way across Gwent at the moment. So myself and Richard are mirrored five times over, if you like, across the region, pulled together and we're actually starting to develop this. And it does actually, I, I think, lend itself to having officers who understand the local picture, developing the regional approach so that we can actually try to to strengthen this and build the best foundations as we start really with the regionalised approach for the Public Services Board. Um, I, I hope that answers your question unless my colleague Richard would like to come in with anything additional. So thank you, Councillor. OK, thank you very much. Uh, very good answer, Sharon. Thank you for your input. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you. Um, I, I have a question, um, Sharon or Richard. Um, the it says in the report that um, each local authority will take um, a two year stint to oversee in the whole board at a time. Um, so does that mean that we'll just get one annual report for the regional body or will we get an annual report for the regional wellbeing and the local wellbeing as well? And if it's just the work, who takes the lead on the regional annual wellbeing report? Is it the lead authority um, who will draw up that report and present it? Or will it be a collaboration of all five, if you like, inputting into that report? Um, 
I think that's it for the moment. Thank you. <laughs> I don't know who's best to answer that. Yeah. I think uh, Sharon's answered to Chair. I'm happy to to pick that up, and obviously Sharon okay. can uh, feel free to add anything uh, further. I think you, you raise a good point about the the, the annual report um, and the administrative arrangements of the regional PSB. So it's currently proposed that, as you rightly say, that it'd be a two-year rolling cycle. Um, the Act um, describes that a local authority. Uh, will be the responsible body for administrating administrate the PSB um, going forward. So that's the proposal in place. In terms of, in terms of the annual report, uh, whilst the local wellbeing plan remains in place, uh, I would anticipate you as, as, as local scrutiny would continue to receive uh, an annual report from a, a Monmouthshire uh, perspective on, on that while well, that exists up until, up until 2023. Uh, and obviously in terms of the the governance and performance arrangements that are, that are being developed, as Sharon's described, uh, the regional PSB may also have a role in, in informally signing off that that report. Um, but very much, you know, the, as you'll see on the next item of the agenda, the content and the updates of that is driven by a range of different step leads who are from a range of different partners who, who sit on the who sit on the, the public services board. Um, going forward then for the regional uh, public service board, um, I think it's probably a bit of detail we will probably iron out in, in some of the continuing discussions around the governance arrangements, but you would perhaps expect that um, the uh, administrative, whoever's taken administration would have a key role to play in that annual report. But in, in the same terms, I think, as we see now, everyone who is a partner of the Public Service Board has responsibility for contributing to and updating on the performance of the areas they're leading on and have the expertise in in the report. So I think that uh, will very unlikely to change because they'll be, you know, whoever, whichever partner it is of the board has the responsibility, will have the responsibility for, for updating and reporting on, on performance. But in terms of the administration and coordination of that, it may be that that is rotated in line with the, the PSP's administration arrangements. But I think the finer detail will probably uh, come in, in the in the coming months as that develops. And also once we obviously move to uh, having in place a, a regional um, wellbeing plan as well, which is obviously part of the proposals from uh, likely from 20, uh, 2023. OK, excellent. Thank you. Um, any other points or questions for members, please? before I sum up. Chair, if I may, I have a yeah. second point to the Cherry. Um, the kind of relationship between organisations is different to the kind of relationships you have in your own organisation, like Monmouthshire County Council has a certain sort of kind of ethos and the other county councils may have different uh, types of structures, ethos, staff. Uh, how are you finding the relationships uh, across the, uh, the different counties are working out for you. And uh, I used to work in the interface between major companies. I, I worked for one major company interfacing with others. And for that, I think I had special kinds of training. Um, I just wondered if you feel as though you've had adequate training in this area, if you have any requirements for training, uh, that sort of thing. Okay, thanks. Thank you, Councillor Oden. Um, Sharon or Richard, either, either, I don't mind. Yeah, I'll, I'll come in if that's OK, Chair, and obviously Richard, if you can add to that, if there's anything else you'd like to add to the conversation. It's an absolutely good point. Um, I think we've been fortunate in Gwent to be working through the um, GSWAG arrangements, which is our Gwent Strategic Wellbeing Assessment Group for a long time. Um, Probably over the last five years, I think we've been working in this way regionally with our Gwent partners. Um, so that is our local authority partners and also our public service board partners with the addition of um, Dasa Cymru, uh, Future Generations Commissioner's Office and Welsh Government colleagues as well. So we've been in a very fortunate position, I believe, Councillor, that we've we've um developed relationships over a long period of time we work well in this space with our colleagues um and yeah we, we we've managed to kind of move forward i believe as a region with some trust and some collaboration around how we 
truly believe what we're trying to achieve is the best thing for everybody across the region and for each of our respective local authority areas. So we, we are able, I believe, to have those awkward conversations. And I think um, absolutely right that you say sometimes it is a skill and it does require um, certain amounts of um, compromise, but compromise in you know, the right way, I think, so that we, we don't lose sight of what it is we're trying to achieve as part of this arrangement. Um, but obviously trying to find that commonality, that shared purpose and shared priorities in this space and, and really thinking about what each of us can bring to the table. So, um, so yes, yeah, so I think we, we've had a lot of learning over the last five years. We, we've gone through stages of development of forming these relationships, understanding strengths across the region. And, and I think um, Richard will support me in this as part of the regional um, approach to the PSB, the work strands going forward. We have... Um, divided up amongst us across the region who's taking the lead for different elements of developing the regional PSB so it's fairly equitable we are sharing the load the workload across the region at the moment um, but an absolutely valid point because relationships are incredibly important in this space um, and if we don't have good and solid and trusting relationships with our Gwent partners it's going to make this it's a bigger challenge than it actually is at the moment on such a large footprint. So, but yes, I think um, we were in a fortunate position that we've been working in this space for a number of years in the lead up to this. But thank you for the question. Thanks very much. Would you like to come in and add anything, Richard? Well, I chair just support what what Sharon said about that, and I think. Um, Councillor Roden's point about about training. Um, I think through the through the process, obviously we are learning from from other colleagues. There's you know there's legislation and guidance which guides what we do, but you know other five areas have, have learned and developed, and we've been fortunate that we've shared a lot of that in terms of our collaboration arrangements through the the G Swag network. Uh, you know, and as we go through this process, I think it's you know certainly from a personal level, really really helpful to continue to learn from what others are doing and you know I can't speak for them hopefully maybe some things they, they learn from us but, he, but all I can say is we're certainly learning from from them as well in terms of you know how we can become more efficient and effective in, in this way so that I think a strong collaboration and strong existing relationships you know both to have the easier conversations and to have the where needed perhaps some of the more challenging conversations stand as in has stand stood as in good stead and will hopefully stand as uh, well going going forward thank you very much excellent thank you both thank you members um summing up then um uh, we've had a really helpful discussion on the regionalization of the public services board of gwent key advantages highlighted this morning are a strengthened strategic board whilst retaining a strong local voice to enable us to respond to our communities it should offer us a stronger oversight of some of the regional work such as domestic abuse and should enable us to have greater focus on common excuse me, regional issues such as climate change and obesity. We've also talked about how plans should be more cohesive across the region and governance should be strengthened. The select committee gave its support to the original proposal to merge the PSBs, so we are content that regional arrangements are now being put in place. We are pleased that there is recognition of the need to ensure that we can scrutinise local delivery to ensure outcomes are provided for Monmouthshire citizens. Thank you to officers for all the work that must be involved in merging the boards and we will see what transpires in terms of the future scrutiny arrangements. Um, and that brings us on to item agenda six, Public Service Board Wellbeing Plan Annual Report. And Richard again, please. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Chair. Um, so the report for you today is to present for your scrutiny of the PSB's performance in 2021 in delivering their objectives of the, the wellbeing plan. Uh, the production of the annual report is a requirement under the Future Generations Act and this is the third annual report uh, produced by the PSB on its, on its wellbeing plan. Um, through the year, uh, PSB partners have clearly had a substantial uh, focus of their activities on on the pandemic uh, and in some cases this has led to a lessened focus in progressing some areas of the well-being objectives. Um, the report will set out however where partners have evolved and adjusted their delivery and their objectives uh, through the year including um, some of the valuable work that, that partners have been undertaken 
to undertaking to uh, respond to the pandemic and supporting um, Monmouthshire residents through this these unprecedented uh, unprecedented times. Um, so the report provides an update for you uh, from the step leads, uh, from a range of different partners on the progress and activity delivered for each of the steps in the plan end of the year. Uh, it also includes an update from um, Town and Community Councils that fall under the Act in terms of the activity they've delivered uh, this year and the valuable support they provided uh, under the Future Generations Act. And uh, it also contains um, some data from the National Wellbeing Indicators provided by uh, Welsh Government. Um, as Sharon has already mentioned, uh, it's briefly set out in the report, there's obviously a need going forward to ensure that the PSB continues to focus on its wellbeing plan on the issues of most importance to wellbeing in Monmouthshire. A following review undertaken by, by PSB partners, there's been an agreement to particularly prioritise efforts over the next uh, couple of years, existing wellbeing plan on, on some areas, uh, a particular focus. So these are climate and decarbonisation, mental health, the economy, and in particular, uh, to which the pandemic uh, may have exacerbated uh, inequality. Uh, and the PSB, through the arrangements of which we've just been been discussing, will continue to work with, with local and regional partners to develop its, its delivery on, on those. Um, I think Chair probably take the opportunity to to thank um, thank all partners for providing their updates. Clearly, a very busy time for all public services. Um, and whilst there has been a slight delay in getting the report to you beyond the original deadline, I think it's worth noting the significant effort that partners have put in place to um, provide you know, the valuable and rich update in the report before you uh, today. There are some small parts that may be subject to further review uh, by the by the step leads, but the report should give you a, a comprehensive overview of, of, of the progress of the public service board. Uh, um, just to state that following the um, scrutiny today, the, the, the report we presented through to um, the public service board for, for approval and then will be uh, subsequently uh, published on the PSP's website. So um, perhaps it gives you a big overview, Chair, unless Sharon's got anything to add. So we're happy to take, uh, happy to take questions. OK, um, any questions, members? Mm, no. Um, I... Councillor Roden? Um, in terms of the actual report itself um just put it up a second uh i was quite uh quite impressed with this i must admit the one area that i'm always interested in is the statistical side which is down at uh well it's it's thrown obviously but there's a an element i'm particularly interested in is a comparison on page uh what would be 37 onwards and there you're you're comparing us with other counties, various national indicators. One minute you're comparing us with Kevidigian, Gwynedd and Wrexham, and then the next minute it's with the Vale of Glamorgan. Uh, could you uh, give me some background as to why you pick the certain counties in each time? Uh, that would be quite interesting to know. Uh, also, I can also see that there are differences in Monmouthshire's performance uh, in different years and uh, maybe there's quite an element of uh, covidity in there. I just wonder if you could give a comment on that, please. OK, does that does that make sense? Yeah. OK, to answer, Chair. Yep, yep. Yeah, thank, certainly. thank you, Councillor Roden, for, for the question. Um, in terms of uh, so we, we thought it was helpful to uh, not just include Monmouthshire's performance and compare it to Wales, but also um, show some comparison to, to similar comparable authorities. Um, so the way in which those are those are chosen is it's it's we look at each indicator, what which particular area of wellbeing is it looking at, economic, social, environmental, cultural wellbeing, and then look at what similar authorities using a, a statistical tool based on different 
variables. So those could be socioeconomic variables, demographic variables, geography variables for, for some degree. And then depending on which indicator it is, we then choose which area is most similar statistically to Monmouthshire. And obviously there's some variation in statistical modeling always. So, that, you know, it, 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 so it gives you an idea about what some of our similar areas in terms of some of those variables, uh, uh, what they um, what the statistics show for them compared to Monmouthshire. So that's why they vary between indicators because we're using slightly different variables depending on the indicator that is that is chosen. Um, and in terms of what the the uh, the numbers show in the table, I think probably worth stressing these are these are national indicators. So they're looking at nationally how each area is progressing towards the national uh, well-being goals. They're not necessarily a performance indicator in themselves of any one individual public body or public service board. Nonetheless, the public service board use them to look at how they're progressing against those broader well, well-being goals. Um, I think you, you rightly mentioned what the impact of the pandemic has been on those. I think there's a number of them where you'll see due to delays in reporting where they'll be covering periods prior to the pandemic in lots of cases. Um, but where and as more up to date information becomes available for these national gators, and obviously there is now uh, quite a wealth of information about how well-being is has impacted and what you know what the medium and long term impact may be of the pandemic on on well-being uh, we'll need to give some of those areas further consideration um, and i think the the process i was talking about in the previous item around the well-being assessment uh, will be particularly key to that so looking at what you know the social economic environmental cultural well-being is of monmouthshire local communities in monmouthshire um, and that will cover where data and evidence and obviously the views of the people living in Monmouth as well, what they feel has been the impact and what their well-being is um, now and, and what may impact it in, in the future. So I think it's something that through that well-being assessment process we'll look to look to update um, through that for those arrangements. And obviously um, PSB partner organisations themselves will provide uh, a vital range of evidence to to in, to inform that uh, uh, as well. Hopefully, that answers. Um, I do some explanation and answers on on those and future plans of, of using wider data Excellent. and evidence. I'm really uh, looking forward to getting the data uh, for this year, uh, last year, uh, and see you know in some detail what kind of impact. Uh, we've seen. Uh, you, you, you look out the window uh, at certain times of the last 15 months and there's hardly any traffic on the road. Um, you know, it does have a, a major impact on some of the measures. Uh, secondly, if I, if I may, Chair, um, hypothetical this, uh, I, I like data. Uh, I like breaking numbers down. Uh, do you think that it would ever be possible to have a synthetic county in, in essence uh, data wise where you can actually look at the uh, a figure for rurality, a figure for different bands of housing uh, and pull it all together to make a synthetic uh, structure of a county to compare possibly more accurately with other uh, counties by just extracting the same data from them? Does that make sense? Uh, yes, I think so. And I, I share that uh, mm. passion for, for data uh, mm. and intelligence. Uh, I think um, I think what we, what, we, what we can look to do through this is look to utilise data in a way as most effective as possible to help it understand that story of well-being um, and use the range of data at, you know, as low a geography as possible um, to allow us to do that as well. Um, so I think, you know, in direct answer to question, I think, you know, longer term, I think, you know, as a data, uh, as someone who's interested in data, I think, you know, we want to gain as best insight we can in whichever way that that forms uh, we can to to understand how we plan uh, for well-being uh, and improving well-being in the in the in the county. I think hopefully through the through the well-being assessment process again. You know, I think as a public service board working regionally, but also locally, that will be uh, you know a natural next step for us in building on, uh, you know, the 
statistical assessment, but also um, you know the qualitative and people's views that come in. Out we get from, from people in the county to build up our knowledge again of, of well-being um, and hopefully use that then as a continuing step process to continue to to improve uh, and understand that you know we've seen examples I think through through the pandemic where we you know we as public services we as Monmouthshire County have used data and intelligence on a more local level to understand the panel services I know the committee looked at some of the you know the poverty and inequality work happening and the level of uh, of detail that broke down certain um, certain elements that affect poverty and well-being in the county so I think you know through those range of mechanisms we can we can continue to make progress and that's certainly the intention through the through the through the well-being assessment, so I think from the PSB's point of view, that's the you know, that's the, that's the, the lens, and it's obviously supported by legislation in which we can we can hopefully continue to to do that. Um, and I'm sure Councillor Roden, you'll you'll want to uh, scrutinise that and make sure that you know that those the steps are uh, are being sufficiently uh, taken towards that. It might not be there in 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 12 months, but hopefully over time we can keep keep working towards it. Well, thank you very much, Richard. That's grand. Hmm. Thank you. Um, Councillor Woodhouse, if you've got any questions or points you'd like to raise, please. Yes, I, I'm trying to follow. It's quite difficult, but I'm trying to follow. Um, yeah, I, I just want to congratulate you on this, this report because reading through it, we recognise so much has happened in the last 12, 15 months. So much that you've put in here has changed, is changing rapidly. Um, Council Roden referred to traffic. I mean, traffic at one point was so quiet. There was nothing happening on the roads. Now, I think it's gone the other way. It's increased to, to you know, people are still unfortunately reluctant to use public transport. And the roads around here are absolutely chock a block, you know, much busier than prior to the pandemic. Hopefully now with active travel and all the thing, good things I'm reading about in here, we can get people encourage people to you know have less dependency on their cars because it causes lots of issues in, in um, with regard to parking and and um and and other things but um I, I just wanted to say well done because I say things are changing so so quickly I should know but I can't remember what the iceberg model is it's referred to on page 10 I think it is with the, the beginning of the report so if you could you just remind me what that means um and something that's um, on page 24 about the business resilience um, meetings board. Um, this was touched on in um, another meeting I attended regard to the membership of it. And I understand it's chaired by the cabinet member, but I just wondered if there are any opportunities. Are there any um, members involved in that? And perhaps going forward, that could be something that could be uh, considered. We touched on that democratic services as well. So well done and thank you for the report. Thank you, Jim. Sharon. Sorry, thank you, Chair. Uh, just ah. to to um, in response to Councillor Woodhouse's query about the iceberg model, uh, the iceberg model is linked to the um, CAMS transformation model under the RPB. So it's looking at how we address um, the mental health and well-being and emotional resilience of children and young people. Um, but it, it's got um, there's a number of strands of work under that model, Councillor Woodhouse, and um, some of that is around how we push community psychology out into the community to understand the behaviours of children and young people, linking very strongly with ACEs and the um, analogy of it takes a village to raise a child and how we keep children and families well in a community, but that we have intervention at different stages of the pyramid, an inverse pyramid, so that we're pushing more resources out of specialist treatment into the broader community setting to ensure that um, we have support outside of just the clinical CAMS most severe um, cases. So essentially at the tip of the iceberg, we're trying to inverse that to make sure that we can actually ensure that we're putting more resources out into the community into different settings by these various strands of work to ensure that children and young people have the best possible start in life and we can address any issues around mental health and emotional resilience at the earliest point. Thank you. OK, thank you. Um, Yes, I would just like to thank you for um, for this report. It's um, it, it's very thorough and it's um, a lot of work involved. Um, how long does it take to 
write a report like this? And when do you start to gather your information to to write the report? Um, just out of a personal interest, because um, obviously you've got other areas that you work in as well. Um, so how long does it take you to write this report? And when do you start gathering all the information to put together, please? Anybody? <laughs> Do, do me, Chief. I yep, start off with Sharon, and uh, it is very much a it's very much a, a collaborative effort writing the report. Um, so each of our each of the steps under the Public Service Board set out under those objectives um, has a step lead in place who are responsible for uh, obviously coordinating the delivery of that step, but also in, in working with other partners who, who, who have a role in that step to coordinate the activity, uh, but also as well as obviously the, the delivery side, then have a role in reporting the progress and performance of that step um, during the year. So um, it, it's very much something that, that that Sharon's community partnership team then support throughout the year, those step leads in, in delivering that uh, and then help and assist them in coordinating those updates in a in a consistent uh, enough format to, to populate the, the, the annual report before you today. So it's very much a collaborative effort of all PSB partners to do that. Um, so that's the, the step lead part of it. Um, we also then look at some of the broader parts, Council of Rodents picked up on the national indicators and, and updating those. So it, it's really a progress process, I think, that probably is in place throughout the year. But I think then activity ramps up once we get past um, past the end of the financial year, which we're reporting. So, so in April time, uh, then to, to look to to collate it and bring bring the various elements of the report together. You see before you today, to Sharon, if you want to add more your your team's work in that, and also the work you do with them, with uh, with with town and community councils as well for for their their updates as, as part of the report as well. Thanks, Richard. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, it, it, it is an ongoing process. It's iterative, as Richard has said, and I think throughout the year, um, leads in in my team and the community and partnerships development team, we we do heavily support partners um, around their work to ensure that things are happening in Monmouthshire, that we can keep track of that work and to ensure that it's on target or really to try and strengthen where we can see other avenues and alignment to some of the work that's taking place across the county. So um, recognising that each of our partners who are leading these steps, similarly to everybody else, is also um, has another role that they do full time within their respective organisation. So it's a very much a collaborative effort. We we do support them throughout the year um, and it is ensuring that we can try and help make it as seamless as possible for them to, uh, to, to get the information in, but also where they potentially need reach into other parts of the business, into other organisations, then we can facilitate and broker that to ensure that we can strengthen some of this. So we do we do manage to stay on top of the work throughout the year and have good oversight of it. As you say then, and as Richard has already said, it is that kind of when we hit the the deadline at the end of the year, so the financial year ends, it's, it's about how we collate and compile all of that information then and how we can support our partners to to get that information together um, and, and as members on here will probably know we do have um, members of the team who work across the county they each have responsibility for an area um, and then we do have members of the team then who work and link directly with our town and community councils in this space so that we can try to um, just keep that relationship with them throughout the year to, to try and insist them in any way that they might need any help and support or additional information and again it's setting that kind of deadline then for returns on what they would like to have um, represented in the, the PSB annual report as they've contributed towards the wellbeing objectives in the county as well and we wouldn't want to lose any of that work so really it's about trying to to ensure that the the really good elements that are taking place out there and the solid work that all of our partners are doing across the entire county and our communities in this space as well we don't lose any of that and we can try and reflect that as best possible albeit it has been off the back of a pretty horrendous year for everybody I think so 
as Richard said, it, it's been um, it's wonderful to hear the comments from councillors today because there's been an awful lot of work from partners and and the effort to put this report together off the back of yeah an unprecedented year for all <laughs> of us, I think. So <laughs> thank you, Chair. Yeah, um, no, obviously it's been a, an extremely difficult year. Um, and I know we're here for public services select, um, but I'd, I'd just like to take this opportunity to thank the whole organisation for the past 15 months, really. Um, not just um, the work for the to keep the community going, but keeping us councillors informed and up to date as well on a regular basis. It's been um, it's been outstanding, to be honest with you. Um, yeah, yeah. One point I would just like to raise the use of acronyms. Um, there's quite a few acronyms in, in the report. Um, and I've, I've been on council for four years now and I should know the um, what the, each acronym means. Can I ask in future if there's a um, a page in the report with a list of each acronym and what they stand for, um, even if use uh, words that were used in the past and might not be used, but may be used in the future. So it could be a standard page in the report that is just um, just in case there's others like me that can't always remember. Um, that would be great. Thank you. Has any, any other points or comments, members, before I sum up? No, OK. Um, the committee has received the PSB's annual report and are quite impressed with the report. We understand that comparisons are drawn with statistically similar authorities and we think that is helpful in terms of enabling us to see how we are progressing against the broader well-being goals at a national level. We recognise that having a wider evidence base will help with the development of the new well-being assessment and we also recognise that there has been so much change over the past 18 months that the COVID pandemic will have a significant impact on well-being that will also need to be captured within the assessment. As a scrutiny committee we will want to scrutinise this going forward. We would like to thank you all for your work in drawing the work of the PSB together into such a well-written report and congratulate you on your hard work. The committee asks that you feedback our conclusions to the scrutiny of the annual report to the PSB. Um, I would also just like to um, add, um, look after your own well-being as well, um, because without you, um, you know, we, we need you all. So thank you very much. Um, and thank you. Thank you for your time today. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you, Chair. Thank you. That uh, moves on to item seven to confirm the minutes of the previous meeting held on the 19th of November. Uh, any comments, members? I'll be um, happy to meet Chair. Sorry. <laughs> After you, Sheila. No, I just said I wouldn't have been at that meeting. This is my first one. <laughs> uh, I'm happy to move, Chair. OK, um, if, we, I'll, if, I'll, we, if we're allowed to do it, are we uh, do we need a, uh, three people to to uh, move it? Um, that's a good question, Hazel. You just need a second. Uh, oh, okay. second. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. So they're moved then. Um, item eight to consider the select committee's forward work programme. Um, any comments, members? Very much in the Asia? developmental stage, Chair. Very much in the developmental stage because of the merger towards regional PSB. But uh, okay. if, if there's any sort of suggestions from the committee, we can include that too. OK, um, if no one's got any suggestions today, can I ask that they email Hazel? Any suggestions, please? Is that all right, Hazel? Yes, that's fine, Chair. Thanks. Excellent, thank you. And that, oh dear. That moves us on to item nine to note the date and time of the next meeting uh, to be confirmed. Um, that concludes this, today's meeting of the Public Select Services Committee. Um, thank you, everybody. Thank you, officers, for your time. Thank you, Hazel, for your support. Members, for being kind. <laughs> Thank you, um, Jamie. Well done. <laughs> and your inputs have been very interesting. Um, and thank you very much and hope to see you all soon. Okay. Excellent, Thanks, Chair. Everybody. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, officers, for a superb uh, session. And thank yeah. you, fellow councillors. Thank you. Goodbye, all. Thank you. Thanks, all. Thanks, all.